Lord God, you have brought us safely to this hour of evening prayer. We thank you for providing all that we need for body and life. Bless us who have gathered in your name. Forgive our sins. Speak to our hearts. Dispel our sorrows with the comfort of your word. And receive our hymns of thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our living Savior, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We'll join in singing Psalm 33, which you can find on page 79. <laughs> Jesus, knowing all that was going on, 
going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Who is it you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he, Jesus answered. You are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas approached Jesus to kiss him and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward and seized Jesus and arrested him. When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? One of Jesus' companions, Simon Peter, reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. No more of this! Put your sword back into its sheath, Jesus said to him. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Do you think I cannot call on my Father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? And he touched the man's ear and healed him. At that time, Jesus said to the crowd, the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour, when darkness reigns. This has all taken place that the writing, writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. All the disciples deserted him and fled. Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and took him away. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. They brought Jesus to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Then they took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the chief priests, elders, and teachers of the law had assembled. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus, and because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside of the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. It was cold. The servants and officials stood around the fire they had made to keep warm. Peter entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. One of the servant girls of the high priest on duty at the door came by. When she saw Peter seated there in the firelight, warming himself, she looked closely at him and said, You also were with that Nazarene Jesus. Are you not one of this man's disciples? He replied, Girl, I am not. I do not know him. I don't know or understand what you are talking about. Simon Peter went out into the entryway, and the rooster crowed. A little later, when the servant girl again saw him there, she said to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Someone else saw him and said, You are one of them. Again, he denied it with an oath. I am not. I don't know the man. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly, this fellow was with him. For he is a Galilean. Who was standing there, went up to Peter and said, Surely 
you are one of them, for your accent gives you away. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? And then Peter began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. And just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord that he had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. Went outside, broke down, and wept bitterly. Now Annas had sent him, still bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I have always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus had said this, one of the officials nearby struck him in the face. Is that any way you answer the high priest, he demanded? If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, speak up about it. But if I spoke the truth, why did you hit me? The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Finally, two came forward and declared, We heard him say, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. I will destroy this man-made temple and in three days will build another, not made by man. Yet even then, their testimonies did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I charge you under oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. I am, said Jesus. It is as you say. But I say to all of you, in the future you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, and spoke in blasphemy, Why do we need any more witnesses? Look now, you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Christ, who hit you? The men who were guarding Jesus began to mock and to beat him, and to say many other insulting things to him. Here ends our passion history. All we like sheep have gone astray. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. By his wounds we are healed. Let us continue with our next hymn, the Sermon Hymn, in 344, at the name of Jesus.
this afternoon from John chapter 18, beginning at verse 33. Pilate then went back into the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is true? Pilate asked. And with this he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him! Give us Barabbas! Now Barabbas had taken part in a rebellion. This is the gospel of our Lord. May be seen. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One term that you undoubtedly have heard in the last few days and probably for the last two years is the term fake news. Yes, this is a term that President Trump has been using regularly, and whether you agree with it or not, plenty of news stations have gone about in looking at what indeed fake news is. In fact, back in 2017, about a year from today, 60 Minutes did a special on fake news. And sure enough, they found that there are plenty of fake news outlets out there. That it's very easy to go ahead and type something up on your blog and then put it up on Facebook and then manipulate it with likes and shares and more likes. Then all of a sudden it seems to be more and more true. And I'm guessing that maybe you have even fallen for some of this fake news in your life because you saw how many people liked it. Well, if over millions of people have liked this and have shared this, certainly it must be true. And, of course, maybe after a little while we find out, no, it's not true. Actually, the facts are something completely different. Fake news is something that is irritating to people because we like to know what's true. We like to hold on to the truth and we like to never let it go. And so when all of a sudden we feel bamboozled or lied to, we get a bit upset. And so the three words that we are looking at today for our sermon theme is what is true? These were words uttered by Pontius Pilate. Now, some people say that Pontius Pilate was a cynic when he said these words, like, what's true? I mean, you tell me, mister, what's true? But I really don't think he was too much of a cynic. I think his uh, general mindset was very similar to ours. If you think about it, you had all of these various groups around you all giving their own side of the story. You had the Sadducees saying one thing, the teachers of the law saying another, the Pharisees saying another, you had the horde of people outside saying another, and so, honestly, he probably was wondering, why in all of these different messages am I hearing, what is the truth? As we look at it, though, as Christians, it's, I guess, important for us to understand the truth as well, isn't it? It's important for us to realize and ask ourselves the question, well, as a Christian, are we right? Because eternity is a very long time if we're not. And so the questions that we will ask today and the truths that we will find are this. What is true? The truth is Jesus is not the person 
that the people want him to be. What is truth? Well, the truth is, Jesus is, and thank God he was, the one he has claimed to be. When we look at our lesson for today, it's important for us to see all the different things that the Lord Jesus said and did not say, but also leading up to his arrest. You see, when he was arrested, they arrested him for blasphemy. But you'll notice that all of a sudden there was a change of focus once he went before Pilate, before Caiaphas. It was a spiritual focus before Pontius Pilate. It was a political focus. He wanted to be a king, he said. And that's, you know, to a Caesar, to a Pontius Pilate governor. That's not good. There can only be one ruler and in that area, his name is Pontius Pilate. Nobody would rival him. And so that was the charge that the Jews brought against Jesus. But when you look at it, all of the different things that they were accusing Jesus of, all of the authorities did not present a case to Pilate that was at all convincing. When he went into Pilate's palace, in fact, Jesus was completely honest and perfect. Pilate was absolutely troubled. In fact, Pilate's wife, if you remember, she too was troubled. Because all the questions and all the different things that they asked Jesus make sense. It was completely true. And Pilate was really struggling with what is true. And so Pilate and Jesus' accusers had one thing in common. Jesus wasn't who they expected him to be. You think about Pilate sitting there. I'm sure he's had a few run-ins with kings before. And so when he asked Jesus, so you're a king, you almost have to answer it with, really? Like, like you're, you're a king? Because he didn't look like a king. He didn't have a crown on his head. He didn't have royal robes. He didn't ride into town on a royal steed. He didn't do any of those things. He didn't look the part. And so when Pilate hears the answer from Jesus, when he says, yes, I am a king, but my kingdom is not of this world, Pilate had to scratch his head a bit and say, huh, so you're a king then, huh? It almost would be better if, if Jesus said, you know, I, you know what, you got me, I'm an imposter, I am just some ruler who wants to take over. But he didn't. Jesus was completely docile. Jesus was completely silent, like a lamb before slaughter. Jesus did not look at Pilate and say, you know what, I am going to lead an insurrection and you're going down, buddy. No, he didn't do any of those things. And so Pilate had to really get to the bottom of it, and he couldn't. He was greatly and deeply troubled. Now, his conscience said one thing. You know, he went out to the people and said, well, you know, guys, you have this custom. I'm going to let somebody go. So what do you want? You know, there's this notorious criminal over there. He's done horrible things. He is a murderer and a whole bunch of other things. Or I'll release you the king of the Jews. Which one do you want me to give you? Because of the hatred that mankind had, and so that scriptures would be fulfilled, Barabbas was releasing them. And Pilate was befuddled. And he simply washed his hands of the man and said, I have no more responsibility to this man. And as far as the Jewish people calling for Jesus' death and Barabbas' release, this is truly, truly a sad scene. Because what do these people see of Jesus? Imagine yourself sitting on a hillside and your stomach is grumbling and all these things are happening and you're listening to Jesus preach and all of a sudden you have bread and fish and you're consuming it. And now you're in a crowd and you're saying, we don't want him, we want Barabbas. Imagine yourself sitting in a town and you know the town man who sits at the gate. He's always been but now all of a sudden he's walking around and you saw him walking around and you heard from this man's lips that Jesus had healed him. Imagine that happen. And yet you're saying, release to us, Barabbas. We don't want the king of the Jews. Crucify him. I mean, what a sad state of affairs, huh? That you literally witnessed with your very own eyes some of the greatest miracles that have ever been known to man. 
a simply short-term memory. Gone. You and I sometimes, when it comes to looking at Jesus and expecting him to be something that he's not, we fall into the same trap, don't we? You see the televangelists, they change Jesus into a whole bunch of things. Whether he's a government or a political figure, whether he is the, the financial guru who's going to get you out of trouble, whether he's the problem solver for all of the life's problems that you ever have, maybe he's the organizational guy, whatever he is, you can see how this world truly has taken what Jesus was and they changed him into what no one expects him to be. And we do that quite often as well. How many of us have not gotten angry at God when he hasn't answered our questions and prayer in the way in which we wanted to because we have changed him all of a sudden into the vending machine of God. It's expecting, well, Lord, I went to church, now it's your turn to do something for me. That's not who God is. Or how often do we all of a sudden get extremely irritated that something wrong has happened to me, but yet I've been living such a good life? How could someone die that I love so much? What did I do? We lose complete sight over the sins that we commit. We lose complete sight over the sinful world that we live in. And we forget who Jesus truly is. So what is truth? The truth is, Jesus is, and thank God for this, who he claims to be. In our world, we have the tendency to make him what he's not. But scripture tells us differently, and we know that the word of God is true. And so we turn back to scripture and we see that Jesus is the truth. He says to Pilate, you are right in saying, I am the king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this reason I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. But he also said to other individuals in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus did not only come to testify <coughs> to the truth, but he himself is the truth. And this truth is the words that come from Jesus' mouth, the Word of God, the Bible. It is truth. This is the inspired Word given to us by the Holy Spirit through men who pen these words down and were carried along by the Holy Spirit. These are not words of men like you would read in Barnes and Nobles. These are not the words of men that you will be entertained by as if you were sitting down in your book note. No, this, these are words of truth, of life. These words rescue us from all of our sins. As we look at the Word of God, we realize that this is not fake news. Of all the things in this world that can be labeled as false, the Word of God cannot. No matter how hard you try, you cannot contradict what the Lord God said. There are no trip-ups, there are no mistakes, there are no whoopsie-daisies. They are completely void from the Word. The Word is true. So let's look at what the Word says. The truth is, Jesus of Nazareth is exactly who he claims to be. He told Pilate that. He was a king, but his kingdom was from another world. And thank goodness for that, because he's preparing a place for us in that other kingdom. Jesus tells Pilate that he is the king, and for that reason he came into this world. And as our king, he fought the battle against sin, death, and the devil for us. As our king, he went and defeated these evil three by his death and resurrection from the grave. Thank goodness Jesus is exactly who the scriptures point him out to be. He is the truth. The one who has rescued you and me from our sins. The one who took all of your sins upon him on the cross and paid for them. And then three days later rose from the dead. That is truth. That is what Jesus has done for us. He has rescued us from our sins. This is not fake news. This is the good news of 
Jesus Christ our Lord. So here is the very truth. We do not need Jesus to be what we thought we needed him to be. We don't need him as a financial planner. We don't need him as the political guru. We don't need him as the advice giver who's going to solve all of our problems. For what he is, really, has already taken all of that away from us. He has solved our greatest problem. The mountain of debt that we had that we could not pay back to the Father has been removed. His blood has washed away every debt that we have. By his wounds we are healed. That is the truth. Thank God he is who he said he is. And so listen to these words, because the king of truth cannot lie. Whoever believes in me shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated at this time. We'll gather with the offering that we have brought on Thanksgiving to our Lord.
We commit to you our bodies and souls and all things because you have purchased us to be with, to be your own with the sacrifice of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us also join in praying the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May be seated for our next hymn in 150.
Yeah, it's fun to see you. Good evening, or good afternoon again. Uh, what a pleasure it is to comfort ourselves with the true Word of God, the truth that we hear from the Word of God, of Jesus Christ our Lord, and all that He has done for us. Prior to going downstairs for our fellowship meal, why don't we join together in the common table prayer? Come, Lord Jesus, be our gifts, and let these gifts to us be blessed. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. 